Hello everyone. So uh, now we are going to discuss, or uh, I would like to tell you something. There is some additional information in optics, and some like let's say some tips and tricks. Okay, some tips and tricks of optics. So we are we are going to discuss something. Okay. So we know that like in optics we have learned the basic things and everything. And this is, but some of the things, some of the additional information or some of the additional tips and things we need actually. Otherwise we can't solve all the problems. So now we are going to discuss some of the additional information or tips from optics. Okay, first of all, cutting of lenses. You must have seen this before, I think. But otherwise, if you haven't seen this before, like you just please listen. That look at this cutting of lenses. We can cut a lens into two. That is in a in this way, vertical way, and this horizontal way. Okay. So we can cut a lens into two. Uh, I mean, in two directions. So how, how, what would happen to the lens after cutting? Okay. This is a common question I have seen somewhere. So in, in, I mean, in some some places. Listen. So in this case, when we cut vertically, so the uh, two parts of lens would be like this. Okay. In that case, so like uh, it would not be like exactly correct, but hypothetically we are saying, or theoretically we are saying, this would be the case. Okay. So again, look at this. So what would happen? The this lens will be like this lens that is equal to, or that the focal length of that will be equal to 2f. And what about this one f? So focal length would be double. Focal length will double uh, the value, and we can uh, we can prove that actually. But we are not going to uh, we are not trying to do it in this way. We will try to prove it in that way. Okay, look at this because we don't have time to prove everything in optics or in, in physics. Okay, so now we want that we have to get that idea okay, uh, in, in a good good way and uh, to apply it. How to apply those things? In Questions. That is only we need right now, and uh, this with value will be two f. And what about power? Power will be p by f. Well, it is very obvious because power is one by f, right? Power is equal to one by f. So when you take it is one by two f. Okay, so one by f, one by two f. So power will be a p by f. Okay, power new power here power of p, and here it will be p by f. And again. One more thing: If we cut the lens in a horizontal direction, what will happen? F and P. Nothing will change. Okay, nothing will change about this one because the thickness is not changing. That is why there is no change in power or there is no change in focal length. Okay, but one thing you have to notice. Listen, all of you listen. One thing you have to notice here: the aperture is same. Here the aperture is same. Okay, but here the aperture is half. Okay, so here the intensity, intensity of image, we will get the image, right? So intensity of the image same. Here intensity reduces. Here intensity reduces. So this is what will happen. Like if we cut the lenses. Okay, I think we have discussed power, focal length. Power and intensity. Okay. Next, silvering of lenses. This is also like a pretty good concept, but uh, I don't think I don't think it is a very very important. But it is in, in, in it's important in, in its own way. So look at this. So I I have given the general formula of silvering of lens and how to solve it. One question. And remaining two questions I have given here. This is for you, over. And the thing is, like you can try with respect to concave lens also. I have considered only convex lens here. You can try for concave lens also. Okay. So all right. So look at this. So this is this is a silver of lens. What what does that mean? So this is actually what is this? This is a plano convex lens. Plano convex. Lens. So in a plano convex lens, so if you silver this convex part, okay, if you silver the convex part, so we will get this one. Okay, this is a lens plus mirror. Okay, look at this, a lens plus mirror. Okay, what what is what is this mirror? Yeah, it's a convex mirror. Oh, fine, all right. So look at this. Then the combination, this combination, 
would have a focal length of this one. Okay, that is the equation which is given. 1 by f is equal to 2 by fl plus 1 by f1. 1 by f is equal to 2 by fl plus 1 by f1. Okay, so what is fl? Focal length of lens. What is f1? Focal length of mirror. It's very easy, pretty easy. So, please understand this equation and then we can solve all the problems. Any kind of problem structure of length. So, look at this. Here, in this particular case, how much will be f1? Focal length of mirror, r by 2. R by 2. What is r? Radius of curvature. And look at this. When you consider this curvature, the radius of curvature of mirror and radius of curvature of lens both are equal. Both are same. Again, so this is equal to r by 2. Again, how much will be fl? fl is focal length of lens that is equal to r by n minus 1, where n is the uh, refractive index. Okay, so r fl is equal to r by r, r by n minus 1. So why you would have doubt like why it is r by n minus 1? It's pretty easy only. So you apply the lens maker's formula. Ah, what is the lens maker's formula? 1 by r, 1 by f is equal to n minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. So this equation you can use. Here one side is planar. So you can consider it as infinity. Another one is r you can consider. Then you will get the value. I think you have got it. First one, uh, look at the mirror and find the focal length. It is r by 2. What about lens? Lens uh, value you have to find out from lens maker's formula. So 1 by 1 by f is equal to n minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. So you have to do that. Okay. So again, uh, substitute two values here. Then the answer will be f is equal to r divided by 2n. r by 2n. Here n is refractive index. Okay. n refractive index. So we all know that we can use mu or n. Okay. So I use n for my convenience. Okay. So again, so look at this, what is this, you, you have got it, it's a here a plane mirror is there, then a uh, con planar convex is there, what about this one, it's a convex, it's a biconvex is there, and then uh, a con concave and convex mirror is there, I'm sorry, this is concave mirror, concave, this is concave mirror, this is also concave, okay, this is concave, this is plane. Okay, this is not a convex mirror. I think I have uh, I have told you this is called a uh, vex mirror. It's, if I have told you that, that is wrong. So, sorry, this is called K. Okay, this is called K. We all know that, right? Okay. Alright. So, this is what is silvering of lenses. Okay, silvering of lenses. Next one, from refraction. Next one is from refraction. A beaker contains various liquid layers. This is a pretty good question. And it's a common question as well. So what, what does that mean? Suppose we, we know that if there are two layers of liquid, we can find out the apparent depth or real depth or whatever it is. We need, we have a relation connecting apparent depth and apparent depth, real depth and refractive index. That is n is equal to uh, the apparent divided by the real. So apparent depth divided by real depth. So the same idea we can use it here as well. Suppose there are n number of layers. Okay, there are n number of layers. You must have seen like in some ice cream or in some uh, milkshakes. Like there will be many many layers, right? Suppose if there are n number of layers, then what will be the apparent depth? Just like this. Okay, and what uh, refractive index of n1, d1, depth to d1. Okay, n2, depth to d2, n3, d3. Then what will be the apparent depth to the bottom or apparent depth of bottom that is equal to d1 by n1 plus d2 by n2 plus d3 by n3 etc. Okay. Alright. So again, so this is actually we all know this. d1 by n1 is d by n is apparent depth. We all know that. But we are considering a couple of layers, I mean couple of liquids. Okay. So again, what about no combination? When you consider, now we have considered each one separately. Now the whole combination we are considering then d real divided by d apparent. What is d real? The total depth d1 plus d2 plus d3 etc. divided by d1 by n1, d1, d2 by n2 etc. Okay, this is pretty uh, similar formula, I mean uh, familiar formula. And again, if d1 and d2 are equal, 
if d1 and d2 are equal dd okay then mu value will be equal to 2 mu1 mu2 divided by mu1 plus mu2 okay i think we have seen this this type of formula a number of times right so in average velocity average speed uh, in some other cases i i mean in the case of resistance capacitor etc etc so this is 2 mu1 mu2 divided by mu1 plus mu2 okay all right so this is what a uh, like some some of the tips